Okay, hi again. Um, we're gonna keep going on to 12.3, which is the uh, velocity and acceleration. So in 12.2, we saw like one problem in there. I think it was 14. Um, was it 14? Yep, it was 14. Um, number 14, where you had to find the position vector given um, the first derivative, right? So you had to find r given r prime. Well, that's essentially what's going to happen in this section, except for we know that when you have r, that's considered the position vector. And then v is considered the velocity vector, which is the first derivative. And then acceleration, which is a, is the second derivative, right? All that is information that you learned from Cal 1 or even physics if you took physics with calculus, okay? Um, so we definitely are gonna keep running with that basic information and then apply this new information that has to do with these vector value functions, okay? So let's go ahead and scroll down to see some problems. And I don't think there's too many of them in here. It's just 27, but that's all the pieces, all the different parts. There's only seven problems and some of them I may have a video. Let me go look. Do, 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 do. No, no videos. Okay, cool. Um, if you go under description, sometimes I do give you hints. So, like I tried, I tried. Okay, I can't. I'm very limited as to what I can enter in that description box. So I tried my hardest to give you a hint in there. But I know a lot of times when I'm writing these hints, um, you really have to know what you're doing in order to understand what I'm saying. Okay. Otherwise, you're just looking at it like, what? What is she saying? Well, I don't even understand what that means, right? So that's why I thought it would be really helpful if I made these videos because then I can kind of further explain, write it down so you see what I'm trying to explain. Um, but we're going to go, <laughs> when we get to number six and seven, those are pretty difficult, okay? So I'm definitely going to talk those out so you can understand what is going on, why it's happening, all of that good stuff, okay? And hopefully my explanations are good enough. If they're not, then please, please, please just let me know which part you were confused on, okay? Um, so number one, here we go. This one says, you've got this position vector r and you've got this point, okay? And they want you to find the velocity vector. They want you to find the speed, which is actually the magnitude of the velocity vector because speed is always a scalar, it's just a number, just one number, right? You go this many miles per hour, okay? It's not a vector that has to have um, direction and magnitude, okay? Um, does anybody remember that little guy from the, from, what was it from, Despicable Me? He's called Vector because he has both direction and magnitude. You can never forget that guy, right? <laughs> so I always think of that whenever I hear the word vector. So I have this guy here, but I'm going to put it in component form. So t squared and t. And then you have this point four comma two. Now remember, this is like an x coordinate and a y coordinate, OK? And, and I know that because it says it's talking about the x, y point, OK? So let's go find v. We know that v of t, it's a vector, is the same as finding r prime of t. So in this case, that's going to be 2t and 1. Okay, now if you want to have the speed, which is s of t, s of t is the velocity of the vector, the velocity vector, which means the square root of 2t squared plus 1 squared, which is essentially 4t squared plus 1. Okay, then you have the acceleration vector which is the derivative of the velocity vector, or you can consider it the second derivative of the position vector. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna take the derivative of that and I just get two comma zero, okay? So that's all for part A. Now for part B, it says for me to evaluate the vector, the velocity vector at two. So I'm gonna plug in two and there's no T here, so it just stays a one. So I get four comma one. And then to find a of two, which is, um, da, 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 no, t, no t's to plug in the two. So it's literally just the same value, okay? Now, when you sketch them, um, you have to sketch the graph 
And I think in this case, we might be able to get away with sketching the graph because I think all of the main graphs are the same. So see how all those graphs are the same? Oh, no, they're not. Ha, ha, ha. How are they different? You see them black arrows, them thick black arrows? That's how you know the difference. Look how this one's going in this direction, right? And the other one's going in the other direction. So there's a huge difference. We need to know what direction it's going in, okay? So because of that, I am going to need to find a couple of T values, okay? Now, notice that it does go up to two here in this coordinate, even up to four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in um, T. I'm gonna plug in zero, and then I'm gonna plug in one and two, just to see what direction it's going in, okay? So when I plug in zero into R, I'm going to get zero and zero. When I plug it one in there, I'm gonna get one and one. And when I plug two in there, I'm gonna get four and two. So we can see the direction that it's moving. It's going from zero, zero to one, one, um, one, two, three, four, and then four, two. So it is going in this direction, in that direction, okay? Um, but as it should be also coming this way and then going in that way. They don't just change directions, okay? So it is going in that direction, which is going to outrule a couple of um, answers. So it's gonna outrule that second option to the right, top option to the right, okay? Um, this one is going in the wrong direction, right? My arrow should be going in this direction. So these two are out. It has to be one of these two, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at our point R2. And we know that the derivative, this is the, um, this is R, okay? So that's R. And then from there, you're gonna move according to the first derivative, which is V. So I'm gonna go to the right, one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna go up one. So it's gonna go to the right four and then up one. And so I may be underneath, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I don't know if I'm underneath or over, but it's about right there. That would be V. And then from there, you're gonna have your acceleration, which is gonna go to the right two more units, but it's not gonna move up. So it's just gonna be an arrow going this way and that's your acceleration. So your velocity is gonna be going up and your acceleration, I think your acceleration also starts at the, I know, the acceleration also starts at the point. So for the acceleration, it's gonna go this way, two units, but it doesn't go up or down. Okay, so in the case of these two graphs, that's going to be option, um, the top one, not the bottom one. So both your velocity and your acceleration have to start at the point um, R at this point for two, both of them, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So let's submit that and see if it is good to go before we move on. Yes. Oh, gosh. And I just realized I didn't have no red stuff in there. Oh, well, I think the next one does. Yeah, the next one does. Okay. So in this case, let's see. R is... I'm gonna put it in component form, two cosine of T and two sine of T. And the point is square root of two, square root of two. Now, I don't know where that is on the actual graph. So let me look on square root of two is about 1.4. So it's about 1.4, that point, 1.4 comma 1.4. So then I'm gonna find V of T, And I don't think I entered anything. I never entered any of that stuff. I just wanted to know if I had got the graph right, and I did. 
Um, I'm kind of bypassing all the typing and stuff, but we'll see. Okay. So V of T is going to be the derivative. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of sine is um, cosine. So then A of T, oh no, S of T first. So the magnitude of that guy is gonna be the square root of this guy squared plus this guy squared, which is the square root of four sine squared T plus four cosine squared T. If you factor out the four, you get four times one because sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So you just get the square root of four, which is two. Again, I, I don't wanna write it all down, but Basically, you factor out, right? And then this is just one, and then the square root of four is where I got two from, okay? Okay, now A of T is the derivative of the velocity. So the derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Excuse me, my throat is getting dry. Okay, and pi over four. So we're gonna plug that into there. So I get negative two sine of pi over four is square root of two over two. That's a multiplication, not a dot product. And then two times the sine of square root of two over two. So those will cancel. I just get negative square root of two and square root of two which we already know when I graph it is about 1.4 and 1.4, first one being negative. Then A of T is negative two A of pi over four. A of pi over four is going to be um, negative two times the cosine of pi over four, which is square root of two over two, and then negative two times sine of pi over four, which is square root of two over two. So the twos cancel again, but you got negative square root of two and negative square root of two. So about negative 1.4 and negative 1.4. Okay, so then the graphing part, what direction is it going in? Let's go see our table. So if we have zero and then pi over four and then pi over two, that should be enough for us to get the direction. So if I plug zero into here, cosine of zero is one, one times two is two. Sine of zero is zero times two is still zero. Pi over four, we kind of already plugged in pi over four because we know that cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two and those will cancel. So I'll get the square root of two. Same thing here, I'll end up with another, another square root of two, which is about 1.4 comma 1.4. Pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero times two is zero. Sine of pi over two is one and then times two is two. So if I graph this, <coughs> we have, excuse me, two and zero, um, 1.4 and 1.4, which is about right here somewhere, and then zero and two. So it's going in this direction, okay? Um, and it is a circle. If you go all the way to two pi, you will end up all the way around, okay? But it is going in this direction. It's going um, counterclockwise. So if I go over here to my graphs, you notice that not all of them are going counterclockwise. These two are not going counterclockwise. These two are going clockwise. So those cannot be it. It has to be one of these two. I just don't know which way the acceleration is going and which way the vector, the velocity is going. So here's the point, uh, this point here, 1.4, 1.4, square root of two, square root of two. So that's the point that the velocity and the acceleration are gonna come off of, okay? Now for this one, it means I'm gonna go back 1.4 units, but then up 1.4 units. So I'm gonna be going in that direction, okay? And that's the velocity. For acceleration, I'm gonna be going left 1.4 units, but then I'm gonna be going down 1.4 units. And so that's the acceleration 
Okay. So it looks like this top one, even though it's going in the correct direction in the circle, these are labeled backwards. Okay. Whereas this one in the bottom right is going in the correct direction, but it has the velocity going upward and the acceleration going toward the um, origin. So this one's going to be mine. Okay. Now let's keep going. We've got some more red, so we're okay. Again, let me put it all there so you can freeze it if you need to freeze it for number two. Now number three. Um, this one says, we've got the position, it's the same thing. I just don't have to draw it which is nice. <laughs> so let's do the same thing, but except we don't get to skip the drawing part. So I'm gonna put it in component form. And when I do that, it's gonna be T squared T and then two T to the three halves, it says. Dun, 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 dun. And then time is equal to nine. So notice they don't give me the point, they just give me the time, okay? That's okay, that's all I need, right? Um, so let's find V. That's gonna be two T, one. And when this comes down, it's gonna be two times three halves T. When I subtract one, I get one half. Those go away. So it's just two T one and three T to the one half or square root of T. There we go. And then, um, na, 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 na. okay, now acceleration. Oh no, speed comes next. Speed is always next. I keep forgetting about that speed. So speed of T is the magnitude of these guys. So you got two T squared plus one squared plus three T to the one half squared. I know why they don't make us graph it because it's in three dimensions. That is a nightmare to graph. So they don't make us. Yay. Okay, that's the speed. Now acceleration is going to be the derivative of velocity. So we have two, zero, and then one half times three is three halves. And if I subtract one from the exponent, I get negative one half. And so that's A. And then I need to find V of nine, which means two times nine, which is 18, a one. And then the square root of nine, which is three times three is nine. Then the acceleration of nine, nowhere to plug in the nine, nowhere to plug in the nine. Now this is a little bit different. This is three halves times one over the square root of nine. So this will be three, which will cancel that three. So you get two, zero, and one half. And that's the end of that one. I don't think you can see this too good because of the bright light. But the negative means it's downstairs and the one half means it's a square root, right? And we gotta remember all of our exponent rules. We have to, we have to, we have to. Okay, we're getting closer to those ugly ones that I don't like, but we have to um, so we just gotta get it done. Now, what are these directions? Hold on. Let me write down, oops, I have to put the vectors over this A. Very important. Um, this is eight. There's no J, but then there's a K. So it is in three dimensions. And then they tell me that V of zero equals um, no I, four for J and no K. And then R of zero is a zero vector. You know what that looks like, right? Just zero, zero, zero. So they want us to find V of T, then R of T, and then they want us to plug in two. So let's find V of T. V of T 
is going to be the integral of a of t dt. So I'm going to take the integral of each of these guys, which is going to be 8t. The integral of 0 is still 0, and then 9t. Now you do get a constant, but that's going to be represented by this constant over here. Okay. Um, then let's see. If I plug in zero for t, I will get eight times zero, which is zero. This is still a zero and zero here, plus c, and that should equal zero for zero. So what does that tell me? That tells me that c is zero for zero. And what does that tell me? That tells me that the velocity vector is actually eight t plus zero, 0 plus 4, which is 4, and 9t plus 0, which is 9t. Okay. Then for me to find the position function, that's taking the integral of the velocity function. So then in that case, I get 8t squared over 2, which is 4t squared. This would be 4t. And then this would be 9t squared over 2, which does not simplify plus my vector c. Now, according to the information over there, they say if you plug in zero for t, that would be zero, that would be zero, and this would be zero, that you're supposed to get the zero vector. Well, that tells me that my constant is actually the zero vector, right? If I were to subtract this over, zeros minus zeros are just a bunch of zeros, okay? Whereas here, if you subtract that over, zero minus zero is zero, four minus zero is four, and zero minus zero is zero. Anyway, moving on, that tells me that r is going to be four t squared plus zero, which is four t squared, four t plus zero, which is four t, and nine halves t squared plus zero, which is just nine halves t squared. And then the last part I have to do is plug in a two. And so I get, that's 16, that is eight, this is 18, and we are done. Not too, too bad. Again, these are not bad, it's six and seven that are the crazy, crazy ones, okay? And I'm gonna try my hardest to try to make it make sense. And I hope I do a good job because that's my job, right? <laughs> so let me know if I am not doing a great job and I will try to fix it. So A of T is, I do see some Ks in there, so it's still three dimensions. So you've got I, you do not have anything for J, and then you have negative four for K. For V of zero, you have two for I, three for J, and one for K. And then R of zero, we have just the zero vector. But I always like to put everything in its component form, okay? Okay, let's keep going. So V of T is gonna be the integral of all of these. So E to the T zero and negative four T plus C. If I plug in zero, I'm gonna have uh, one, zero and zero. And that's supposed to come out to two, three, one. So when I subtract this over, two minus one is one, three minus zero is three, and one minus zero is one. So that means that my velocity vector is gonna be e to the t plus one, um, zero plus three is three, and negative four t plus one. Then when I find r of t, we're gonna take the integral of each of these, so e to the t plus t, 3t negative 4, no, negative 2t squared. Plus t plus this constant. Now, when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 plus 0, which is 1. I'm going to get 0, 0, and 0, which is 0, which is supposed to come out to the 0 vector. So when I minus this over, this is telling me that c is equal to zero minus one, which is negative one, zero minus zero, and zero minus zero. 
So that means that R of T, oh, you can't see, oops, sorry. R of T is going to be E of T plus T minus one, comma three T, comma negative two T squared plus T. And that's your R. And then they want you to plug in three. So let's plug in three. We get E cubed plus three minus one is plus two. Um, that would be nine. That would be nine, negative 18 plus three, which is negative 15. And you've got that there. Okay. Now those were the hard, the easy ones actually. Um, what we're gonna get into now is part er, number six, okay? You're gonna have to bear with me on this one, number six. Let me do control minus so I can get a little bit smaller. There we go, now we can read the whole question. So we're gonna work on number six first. And for this one, I will check just because they're really, really, really long. Um, I'm not looking forward to these problems, but it's okay. Okay. Um, you know, they think that there's nothing challenging about teaching these classes, but there is sometimes, sometimes there's just stuff you'd rather not do, but you have to. So number six. Um, it says, use the model for projectile motion, assuming there is no air resistance. Otherwise, that makes things way more complicated and we're not going there, okay? Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to assume none of that stuff exists. Then um, it makes things harder. And if you do end up becoming an actual engineer, you do have to factor in those kinds of things. But not in this class. We're just barely learning the basics. Um, and as long as you get those down, you can generalize stuff later, okay, for your specific profession. But for now, we're going to go with the fact that there's no air resistance, no wind, messing everything up. Okay. So um, we've got the gravity. Um, so we've got G equals 32 feet per second squared. Feet per second per second just means there's seconds and seconds at the bottom, which is second squared, okay? Um, now it says, determine the maximum height and range of a projectile fired at a height of five feet above the ground with an initial speed of 900 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal. Round your answers to three decimal places and they want to know the max height and the max range, okay? So um, one of the things that I do to try to explain what's happening is that I like to draw the projectiles like we did in college algebra. And if I draw this, this thing here, this is essentially what you're doing. Is you fired something at a height of five feet. So that means five feet up, here you are, and you've fired something, right? And it's going at a certain speed, right? A certain velocity, and it's going up, and then eventually it's gonna hit its highest peak, and then it's eventually gonna go down, okay? Um, right here is where it hits the ground, okay? So once it hits the ground, it doesn't go any further below that, right? Um, what you're doing is you're trying to find the max height, which is this right here. This is your max height. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to find this value here, which is your max range. Okay, so you're essentially trying to figure out the maximum of this curve, which we know how to do using derivatives, right? You find the critical numbers and that's usually where your maximums and your minimums occur. And then for your range, you're basically figuring out how much time did it take for it to hit the ground, okay? So I tried to explain that up here on how to find them. Um, and I'm gonna go back up there just so you can, I can read through it and try to make it make some sense. But it says the maximum height occurs where the peak, blah, blah, blah. The max height occurs at the T value 
where y prime equals zero, right? So if you find the derivative and you find where the derivative is equal to zero, that t value, that tells you this t value down here. And then once you know that t value, you just plug it into the y component of the vector and you'll be able to find um, that maximum height, okay? So in order for you to find them, and it says the maximum height is the y value at that t value found from setting the y prime equal to zero, okay? So hopefully that makes some sense now and why you're doing that. Now, the other part, which is the more lengthy part here, um, this part there, says the maximum range occurs at the t value where y equals zero. So notice that the y value has hit the ground. So the y value is zero here. And you wanna find out what that t value is. Once you know what that t value is, you're gonna plug that t value into the x component of the position vector, okay? Um, and then that should be able to give you this x value, which tells you the range. Okay, so I hope that that I, I, I helped make that make sense, although I know it sounds like a bunch of hoopla when you're reading it. <laughs> um, but hopefully that helps a little bit with the picture. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through this, but in order for me to do this problem, I need to have that function, right? I cannot do the problem if I don't know what the y function is and the x function, right? The first component of that position vector and the second position the second component of that position vector. I have to know that in order to take the derivative of the y or to set the y component equal to zero. I have to know it. So unfortunately, we have like those problems that we were doing in the past, we just have two of them, okay? And it's gonna be really weird because you have to separate into what's happening horizontally, which is the x component, versus what's happening vertically, which is the y component, okay? So it gets a little complex, okay? The best way that I can explain it is to literally split the problem into two pieces. I'm basically gonna decipher what the heck's going on horizontally, and then what the heck is going on vertically, and then I'll put the two together as one vector at the end, okay? So here goes. <laughs> um, so for horizontal position, Position, did I spell that right? I guess so, it's good enough. <clears throat> let me draw, let me cut my paper in half because I do not know, I know I'm gonna have to do the same thing for the vertical, so I just wanna line it up. And we'll just use this fold so I don't go over that line. That would just help me so I don't waste too much. I don't go over too far. There. That's all I wanted. Okay, so the horizontal position. Okay, this is the first component of my component of position vector. Okay, the horizontal pieces is just the first component, right? Now, um, this eyeglass is like super dirty. Anyway, um, now, I don't know what's going on with the acceleration because when you drop something, right, the only acceleration that you're, you're feeling is the acceleration purely from gravity. And gravity does not move from left to right, okay? It just moves downward and that's it. It's just a force that's pushing down. So there's no force coming left or right. And if there was, that would be the, the air resistance, okay? And then depending on if it was coming from the left or the right, right, that would affect this horizontal position. But for ours, there is no air resistance. So I do not have anything affecting me. So what that means is it means that the acceleration for this is going to just be zero. Now I like to put the X here because when I'd repeat all of this stuff for Y or for the vertical position, you need to know the difference between this acceleration function and the other acceleration function that I'll create in a little bit, okay? So for, I like to put the subscripts X just so that I can remember I'm talking about the first component, okay? This is just a personal preference. It's not something that is particularly in the book or says that you need to do. It's just the way I like to decipher things, okay? So I don't get myself confused, okay? 
Now, again, I'm going to write in parentheses. That's because there's no acceleration horizontally. But if I want to find out what V of X is, that means I would have to integrate A of X. So I would have to integrate zero DT, which is just going to be zero plus some constant, OK? Um, I don't know, and this is not a vector actually, I'm gonna put the vector at the end because I'm only dealing with one coordinate right now. So then I should not be a vector bar over this. That was a mistake. It's just B, okay? Now, um, I don't necessarily know what that constant is. However, however, I can figure it out, okay? Because, it does tell me that my initial, where did it go? My initial speed is 90 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees, okay? Now, I don't know how much you remember when it comes to the angles and um, the magnitudes, right? But if you remember, your X is actually your initial velocity and then the angle at which it occurs. And that's from Cal, oh gosh, it would have been the end of Cal 2 and even in pre-Cal when they discussed that, okay? When they first introduced vectors in pre-Cal and then when they get a little bit further with vectors in at the end of Cal 2, they talk about that, okay? So we're bringing up that old knowledge. So what that means, V of zero is nothing more than what's happening when um, the time is zero, okay? So what that tells me, this sentence that says initial speed of 900 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal tells me that when V equals zero, I should be getting the value 900 for initial velocity and then cosine of 45 degrees because that's the angle in which um, this initial velocity is happening, okay? So that's the same as saying 900 times the square root of two over two which is the same as saying 400 and, oops, 450 square root of two. Right, just cutting the 900 in half. Okay, so if that's the case, then that is going to tell me that that constant is 450 square root of two, okay? I don't have any T to plug in the zero to figure out what else it would be. So that means also that Vx is a constant, of course, but it's like this constant specifically. Okay, so then that's gonna help me to figure out what the position vector is because the position vector is basically going to be, or not vector, but the position function for the X component is gonna be the integral of this. So I'm gonna get um, 450 square root of two T plus another constant, okay? And then this is gonna come <clears throat> in handy because looking at my graph, right? T is equal to zero here. But look at the x value of where we started to throw the projectile. It's also that x value is zero, okay? So what that tells me is that my position when time is zero, my x coordinate is zero, okay? Which helps because when I plug in zero here, 450 square root of two times zero plus c, I'm supposed to get zero at the end, okay? So that tells me that z equals zero which also tells me that our X is just 450 square root of two T with no constant because the constant is zero, okay? So this is fantastic. This is great. It at least helps me figure out a tiny bit. It helps me figure out that in my position vector, I know that the X part component is 450 square root of two T, okay? but I still need to figure out what's going on in the vertical position, okay? And that one's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit more so I have a little bit more space, um, but I wanna try to keep this all on the screen. So we'll go with that.
So for the vertical position, this one's a little bit different. This is the second component of the position vector. So I'm looking for this guy down here, okay? Um, and when I'm doing this one, we do know something about acceleration with respect to the y value, the vertical position, okay? We know that because of gravity, that it's actually going downward at negative 32 feet per second squared, okay? Which means if I wanna find the y, I'm gonna take the integral of this, which is negative 32 t plus c. And then we also know that the y coordinate is v0 sine of theta. So v0 means initial velocity. So that means that the velocity when time zero is gonna equal that initial velocity of 900 and then sine of 45 degrees, which is 900 times square root of two over two, which is just 450 square root of two. So I know that when I plug in zero, I should be getting 450 square root of two. Well, that tells me that C is equal to 450 square root of two. So what does VY look like? VY looks like negative 32 plus negative 32 T plus 450 square root of two, okay? Which looks a lot different from V over here, right? Now, when I find R, the position, but in the y component, I'm gonna take the integral of this. So that would be t squared over two, so it would be negative 16 t squared plus 450 square root of two t plus c. And then the initial vertical position, look at my graph, right? It's five units positive, five units up. So when I plug in zero for t, I should be getting five, okay? So when I do plug in zero for that, I get negative 16 times zero squared, 450 square root of two times zero plus C, and it should equal five. So this just tells me that my constant is five. And so then what do I get for my position function? I should have put a T there, it's okay though. Um, is I get negative 16 T squared plus 450 square root of two T, and then my constant plus five. And so now I know what goes in this position vector right here, okay? Now, that was a lot of work, but we're not done. We just barely found the piece that normally they would give us and then ask us for this information, okay? So we basically just found what we need to start with, okay? So that's what makes this problem really, really long. So I still have to find the max height and I still have to find that max range. So in order for me to find the max height, I need to find that maximum up there, which means I need the derivative, okay? And I wanna find the max height, so I need to take the derivative of the y component, okay? So what am I doing then? Remember this is, let me leave this here in case someone's wanting to write it all down. Um, if you want the whole thing and you want a screenshot of it, let me put that in there. I can't seem to get it. So I'll be in the same screen. Let's see if I go up higher. I'm at home, it's on Saturday, so don't laugh at my socks. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's good for the most part. You can kind of see everything. So definitely take your screenshot or whatever right here, okay? But I'm gonna use this on the other side. And I'm actually gonna keep these separate, okay? Because I do know what they are separately. So I know that I need, in order for me to find the maximum height, I know that I'm gonna have to find R prime, but of the Y component, okay? I wanna find out where does that equal zero? Well, the ry component of my function is negative 16t squared plus 450 square root of two 
t plus 5. So our prime would be negative 32t plus 450 square root of 2, and that's just 0. So where does this thing equal 0? That happens when t is equal to a negative 450 square root of 2 over negative 32, which is who knows what? 450 over 32, does that reduce? Yes, it does. So I get positive 225 square root of 2 over 16. Okay. Now that's the t value where it occurs. Okay. So here's my problem, my picture here. That's this t value. In order for me to find the actual height, I need to plug that t value into that position vector so I can find the y position. So we're just basically plugging in this 2, 2, 5 square root of 2 into the y component of the vector, which I already have right there. So I'm just going to plug this in. And you want to simplify this stuff as much as possible. You can use your calculator if you want to, but sometimes a calculator doesn't simplify it real nice. So we'll see what we can get. Let me do each piece. Negative 16 parentheses, fraction 225. Oh no, what am I doing? The heck? Square root of 2 over 16, close it, square it. And I get this decimal, negative 6328.125. Then I'm going to plug this in there, 450 square root of 2, get out of the house, parentheses, 225 over 16, that is square root of 2 in the top. Square root of 2, and then close. And I get 12656.25 plus 5. So if I take the negative 6,000 number plus the 12,000 number plus 5, I end up with 6333.125. Before I keep going, I'm going to go check that because that was a lot of work and we want to make sure we're doing this all correct. 6123.125. Let me check it. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, good, it's good. <laughs> now let's do the second part. Okay, so back to my little picture here, right? We're trying to find the maximum range. So we need to figure out what that T value is where the Y position is zero. Once we know that, then we can plug that t value into x and we'll be able to get this x value over here, okay? So let's see. Um, and I'm pointing to, I keep saying the t value here, but it's not actually a t value here. It's just the t value that lands me here and the t value that lands me there, okay? But that's an x position of that point and this is an x position of this point, right? Okay, so we're going to take our y of t and we're going to set it equal to zero to find the max range. Okay, so let's see, that's a quadratic function and I know how to deal with quadratics, right? We just, well, I definitely don't want to factor that with the square root of two in there. So I'm definitely going to be using the quadratic formula. And then our trusty little calculator. So the t will equal negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now I'm going to plug all of this in. Okay, so we have big fraction, negative 450 square root of 2. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign, square root, parentheses, 450, square root of 2, get out of the house, close the parentheses, square it, minus 4 times negative 16 times 5. And then downstairs, I'm going to put 2 times negative 16. And it tells me 
that equals negative 0 0.00785591. Okay, great. Now I'm going to do it again with the minus sign in the middle. One more minus. And we get 39.78261163. Now, this T value doesn't make sense, okay? You can't go back in time. It either happens when it started, it can't happen before it started, okay? And graphically, all it's saying is like, if you were to continue the curve, that's where it would have hit it on the other side, but that's not the one we're concerned about. We're concerned about what happens over here, okay? So we're only gonna take the one that makes sense for time, and that's this value here. Now my calculator, I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna use it because even though it chops it off, the calculator remembers the actual true value, okay? But now that I know that T value, if I wanna know where it hits the ground over there, I need to know that X value. So I'm gonna plug this value into R of X. And R of X was this expression. So we're gonna basically plug in this 39 something or another. So we get 450 square root of two times that number, whatever that is. And I definitely recommend you leave it in your calculator and you just use it. So 450 square root of two per, and then I'm gonna hit times second answer. And when it, it's gonna pull up that very last answer and plug it in there. So I hit enter and I get 25317. What? How many does it want me to round to? Three decimal places. So one, two, three. So it's just four, nine, nine. And then that would be, so this was my max height and this one's my max range. Now let's type it in there and then see if we are good. Two, five, three, one, seven point four nine nine. Did I not click it? That page is done, so I'll hold it up. Yay, got a check mark. Okay, great. Now, number seven. When I run out of paper, what am I going to do now? I ran out of paper. Where is that orange thing? Oh, it's a little car. I told you guys I'm in the game room. I don't have an office. <laughs> so I just have to work in the game room. Give me two seconds. I have some pink paper over here. Okay. We'll ignore whatever's on the back. This is the last problem. So after I finish this video, I'll go grab some more paper before I keep going. Um, I'll just have to use printer paper, I guess. So for number um, seven, it looks like it's very, very similar, except it's asking me for um, the initial speed. What the heck is initial speed? Initial speed is that V naught. Remember how in the past they gave us the V naught? It was this 900 feet per second. Um, but this time they didn't give that number to me. So we have to go find that number. And the maximum height, that's nothing new. We've already done that, right? You take the derivative of the y component, find the t, and then plug that t into the y component position, and you're done, okay? But the other one is a little bit more complicated. And I'm going to read you this description, and I hope it makes sense. But if it doesn't, you're going to see me work it out so that hopefully it makes more sense, okay? But what it says to do is it says, the initial velocity is not given. Use the information for the height, the gravity, and the theta, the angle, to fill in and simplify what you can for the position vector. Then use the extra information to create a system of equations to solve this system of equations to find the initial velocity. Then you enter the initial velocity rounded as requested. However, you're going to use the unrounded version, the exact value for initial velocity, when you go to simplify the position vector. Then you're gonna use that completed and simplified position vector to find the maximum height. 
And you already know how to find the maximum height because it talks about how to do that up there for number six. And we have it, we've done it already, okay? So let's see what it means by creating this system of equations, okay? So <clears throat> let me scoot over so we can see the whole question. So this one says, use the model for projectile function, assuming there's no air resistance again, so that that acceleration function for the for the horizontal position won't be pushed from side to side horizontally, okay? And air doesn't necessarily just blow horizontally either. Air can blow like, you know, like a swirl. And so then the, it gets variable because that swirl of air moves along its own little function, right? And so things can get more complicated. Now we're not at that level yet, so don't worry, but <laughs> that's why we're just ignoring the air resistance altogether. Okay, anyway. Um, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did before where we go and do everything on one half of the page for the horizontal component, then everything on the other side of the page for the vertical component. So it does tell me that the ball is hit I'm going to draw my projectile again, but this time it's three feet above the ground. I guess the player, like, you know, where they're swinging is about three feet off the ground. So the baseball um, hits three feet above the ground and leaves the bat at an angle of 45 degrees. So this is like a 45 degree angle. And then in this caught by an outfielder three feet above the ground at 300 feet from home plate. So if you're saying this is this is home plate wherever they um, they hit the ball, I don't even know which shape. I think it's like a diamond, right? A home plate. I haven't played baseball forever. Um, <laughs> kind of outing myself there. But um, anyway, so let's say the home plate's here. The guy hits the ball and it goes and it flies and it comes down. Supposedly when it comes down, the guy that catches it, catches it three feet from the ground right here. And this distance is... 300 feet away from the home plate, okay? So that's why they're not asking me for the range because they are giving me that range, okay? And I know that the ball is being caught at the same three feet at which it was hit, okay? Um, what they are asking me for though is this max height. And then they're also asking me, even though I know this is a 45 degree angle, what was, how hard did he hit it? Like how much velocity, how many miles per hour, or not miles per hour, but feet per second did this person hit this ball, okay? So we need to figure this information out. Now, um, where do I start? Okay, horizontal position. So for the X position. Um, Again, it's just like before where the acceleration is zero because there's nothing happening. There's no acceleration information given, only due to gravity and no wind, okay? So that means that my velocity function is going to just be some constant, right? And then we also know that V of zero, I'm sorry, we know that x equals v zero and then cosine of our angle which happens to be 45 degrees again so that's v zero times the square root of two over two or the square root of two over two v zero i don't know what number that is but i know that v zero means that when the velocity is at time zero you're going to get square root of two over two v naught okay so there's no X to plug or T to plug in zero here. So I basically get that C would have to equal square root of two over two, which tells me that V X is gonna be square root of two over two V naught, okay? I don't know what V naught is, but that's okay. Let's keep going, okay? So if I find the R X, that's by taking the integral of this, which is just the square root of two. This is just a multiplier, don't know what it is, but times t plus c, okay? Now I do know um, rx of zero, right? If you're taking, talking about time zero, that's here at the beginning, what is the x value right here at the beginning? It's zero. So what that tells me is that if I plug in zero here, 
I should get zero. Well, that's zero. So that just tells me that the constant is zero, which just tells me that Rx is the square root of two over two times V naught times T. I just don't know what the heck V naught is, okay? And that's okay. We're gonna leave it alone for now, okay? Um, now, let's go ahead and talk about what's happening vertically. So we know that on the vertical, we know that A of X or A of Y actually equals negative 32 because of gravity, right? It's going downward negative 32 feet per second squared, okay? So then um, our VY is going to be negative 32 T plus C. We know that Y equals V naught sine of 45 degrees which is also um, gonna be square root of two over two V naught. And we know that V, this is Vx, but we know that Vy of zero. So when the time is zero, the height here, or yeah, the yeah, pretty much like, no, not the height. We don't know velocity of zero. Oh, this is velocity of zero. It's just square root of two over two V naught. Sorry, my bad. So then that means that if I come up here and I plug in zero, I get negative 32t from 32 times zero plus c equal to square root of two over two v naught, which tells me that the c is equal to square root of two over two v naught. So that tells me that vy of t is equal to, I keep forgetting my t's, um, that tells me that Vy is gonna be negative 32T plus this constant. Then when I try to do Ry, I'm gonna take the integral, which is negative 16T squared plus square root of two over two V naught times T um, plus some constant. I also know that Ry of zero, the height, the position is gonna be the height of three. So that tells me that when I plug in zero for T into RY, I should get three, which tells me that the constant is equal to three. So now I know the completed um, function for the Y component is this, okay? So now I have my position vector, R of T, is gonna be square root of two over two V naught T and negative 16 T squared plus square root of two over two V naught T plus three, okay? And so that's what I get for my position vector. But again, that is just to get started, right? Now we still have to continue going, okay? So <clears throat> I'm gonna go over to my next page. And I'm going to take this information here. If you need to take a screenshot, take a screenshot. And I'm gonna move this up, okay? So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to find V. Find initial velocity, which is that V naught, okay? We do need to learn use this, um, this position information, okay? They told me that right here, I don't know what time that happens, but I do know that right here, um, the X coordinate is 300 and the Y coordinate is three, okay? And it's more of like, cause you were talking about a position vector. It's more like a vector that has that as the terminal point, right? So I do know that R of T equals this for any random um, T value, right? But I also know that R of T equals 300 comma three at some point, okay? I don't know what that T value is, but I do know that it will be that, okay? So if I wanna find out where that T value occurs, like what is the T value that gets me right here to this spot, okay? If I wanna know what that T value is, um, all I have to do is solve this. So basically you create an inter, uh, a system of equations where this X component 
should equal that X component. And this Y component should equal the other Y component, that Y component, okay? And so now you have a system of equations which will help you solve for that T, which I really could care less what that T is. More importantly, I wanna solve for V naught, okay? So we're gonna use substitution method. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for T. So to get T by itself, that means I'm gonna take 300 and divide it by the square root of two over two V naught, which is the same as saying 600 over the square root of two V naught, okay? Then I'm gonna zoom in now because now I don't have that everything all on my page. I can just focus on what's on my page. Okay, there we go. So that square root of two over two V naught, and then I simplified it by taking this bottom, bottom two up to the top. And then I wanna plug that T value in here. So negative 16, 600 square root of two V naught squared plus square root of two over two V naught times 600 square root of two V naught plus three equals three. So what do we get here? We get negative 16 times 600 squared, whatever that is, over square root of two squared, which is two, and then V naught squared. Here, these will cancel, these will cancel. 600 divided by two is 300 plus three equals three. So I get negative 16, 600 squared over two V naught equal to, if I minus this over, actually, let me just minus the three over. I'm gonna keep the 300 right there. Now I don't want fractions and I wanna solve for V naught. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, oh, and that should be V naught squared, yes it is. Okay, great, V naught squared. I'm gonna multiply everybody by two V naught squared. So then I can, uh, let me turn that off. That helps a little bit better. I'm going to multiply everybody by the common denominator, which is um, two V naught squared. So when I do that, this will go away. I don't wanna write out what 600 squared is. It's like 36 with four zeros. Um, I'm gonna get 600 V naught squared. But then in order for me to solve, I'm gonna have to add that over. And then I'm gonna have to divide by 600, which will get rid of one of that square. So then I get 16 times 600. And that's nine, six, zero, zero. And then if I take the square root, oops. If I take the square root, I do get plus or minus, plus or minus, um, what is the square root of 9,600? It is, it's 97.9795897. However, that's not the actual answer. So let me see. Um, if I do the square root of 9600, let me see if I take that and do 1600 times what? 9600 divided by 1600 is six. And the square root of 1600 is 40. So this is the exact answer, okay? Now I told you, you're gonna give them this for the answer in the box, but in order for me to continue, I'm going to use the exact part, okay? So now you're talking about velocity. Now, if it were negative, that means the ball would be slowing down. But if a baseball player is hitting a ball, the ball ain't slowing down, right? You're gonna speed that ball up. So the negative one doesn't make sense for us. So our V naught is gonna be 97.9, two decimal places, 98. So I'm gonna type that in the box for our initial velocity. It's pretty darn hard. I can't imagine hitting a ball. 97, well, it's feet per second, not miles per hour, so maybe. Um, okay, now let's see. We got to continue writing our position vector again. So now that I know what the, the velocity is, 
and I know it in its exact form, this is square root of two over two times 40 square root of six T comma. Now I'm just going based off of what my position was and I'm just plugging in this V naught, okay? And then the second component is 16 T squared plus square root of two over two times 40 square root of six T plus three. So if I simplify this, that's actually 20 square root of 12, negative 16 squared plus 20 square root of 12, T plus three. Now I can simplify square root of 12 into two square root of three. So this becomes 40 square root of three T negative 16 T squared plus 40 square root of three T plus three. So this is the position vector. And in order for me to find the maximum height, I have to take the derivative of the Y coordinate component, find that T value when the derivative is equal to zero, and then plug that T value into the position Y. So I can find out that height, okay? So we're gonna take the derivative of our y. And that is negative 32t plus four zero square root of three, and that's it. And if I equal that to zero, I will figure out that t is equal to negative 40 square root of three over negative 32, which is 40 over 32 is five square root of three over four. Okay, and then that T value gets plugged into the Y coordinate so I can figure out that maximum height, okay? So R Y of five square root of three over four is going to be negative 16, five square root of three over four squared plus 40 square root of three times five square root of three over four plus three. And that I can type all in my calculator so bear with me while I do that. Um, negative 16 parentheses fraction, five square root of three over four squared plus 40 square root of three, get out of the house. Parentheses fraction, five square root of three over four, close the parentheses plus three. And I get a really nice number, 78. So then that's what's going to go at the bottom, 78, moment of truth. Let's submit, see if we get this thing right. This one was a long one. It's just super hard. Yay, two checks. Okay, great. Um, so definitely, definitely use this as a reference. I'm going to zone out just so you can see the second page, the whole thing. Um, oh, God, that's not helping. There we go. So if you need to take a um, screenshot, I can't get the whole thing in there. Well, I'll let you screenshot it in pieces then. Take a screenshot of this part. Or if it helps you better. And then the bottom part. Okay. So hopefully that example will help you navigate your way through that problem. Um, it's just very long and very difficult, okay? And then I will be back for 12.4, which is also not one of my favorites. It's not that it's super difficult, it's just really ugly and the problems can get so like lengthy, but it's not fun. But I think, let me see. I think there are only about nine problems in that one. And I don't know that I do all of them. I can't remember, but because some of them might not have read. But either way, I'll be in the next video to do the 12.4. Okay, so that's it for this one.